This is the review for the advanced functions test on trigonometry. Question 1 states, state the quadrant in which an angle with a measure of 155 degrees would lie. So first, remember the quadrants are labeled 1, 2, 3, and 4. And when we're dealing with degrees, we start over here on the right with 0 degrees, go up top with 90 degrees, 180s on the left, 270s in the bottom, 360s over back all the way around. Now 155 falls between 90 and 180, meaning it would be somewhere in this region. So it would be Roman numeral 2 or the second quadrant. Number 3 asks us to label the angles as acute, right, obtuse, or straight. This first one is acute because it's less than 90 degrees. The third one is straight because it's 180 degrees, it's a straight line. 4 is right, it's a right angle. And then 5 is obtuse because it's bigger than a right angle. It's big, excuse me, bigger than 90. Next question, we're supposed to use the axes to sketch the angle in standard position. So we have degrees. Now we're doing negative degrees, so I'm going to go the opposite direction. We have 0, negative 90 degrees, negative 180 degrees, negative 270, and then three, or excuse me, negative 360. Negative 100 falls between negative 90 and negative 180. So it always starts over here, and then it's going to come right about here because it's going to be just past that negative 90. And you do have to also draw the arrow showing which direction you went. Since we went negative, we're going that direction. You have to draw that arrow showing which direction you went. And this one we're doing 40, so we're positive, 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180, and so on. 40 is between 0 and 90, so it will have its starting point on 0 and go to 40, which would be about there. And it's going that direction because it's positive. Number 8, convert 240 degrees to radians. Express your answer as a multiple of pi. To convert something to radians, you multiply it by pi over 180. Now, since we want to leave it in terms of pi, we need to not plug pi in our calculator. Just plug the 240 over 180 in. Turn that into a fraction that's reduced. I believe it's going to be 4 thirds. And we get 4 pi over 3 is our answer. 4 pi over 3. Number 9, convert negative pi over 6 radians to degrees. To get to degrees, we do the opposite. We multiply by 180 over pi. The pi's cancel out. We get negative 180 over 6, which is negative 30 degrees. So to go from degrees to radians, like in number 8, multiply by pi over 180. To go from radians to degrees, like in number 9, you do 180 over pi. I just remember whatever I want to get, I put on top. So in number 9, I wanted degrees, so I put degrees on top, 180 degrees. Number 10, use the triangle picture to find the values of the three trig functions. Well, we need all three sides to do that. We don't have this side, so I'll call it C, because we can use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for it. A squared will be 3 squared. B squared is 4 squared, and then C squared. So 9 plus 16 equals C squared. 25 equals C squared. 5 equals C. So this side is 5. Now here's our theta right here. So given that orientation, this is our adjacent side, our opposite side, and our hypotenuse. Adjacent is always next to the angle, which 3 is. Opposite is across from it, which the 4 is. And the hypotenuse is always the longest, and it's the one directly across from the right angle. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. Remember, some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on acid. 11. Given that the sine of theta is 8 over 17, find the values of the remaining two trig functions. So we can draw whatever picture we want, just so it's a right angle. And if we have theta, the sine has to be 8 over 17. Well, if this is the adjacent side, and this is the opposite side, and this is the hypotenuse, we know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that means our opposite is 8, and our hypotenuse 
is 17. Now we can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out what the adjacent side would be. We'll get a squared plus 8 squared equals 17 squared. Notice, 17 has to go in for the C because it's the hypotenuse. Doesn't matter what you put the other two as, A or B, but the hypotenuse has to be your C. So we get a squared plus 64 equals, um, I think 289, let me double check. Okay, 289, subtract 64 from both sides, and we're going to get a equals 15. So now we have all three sides, 8, 15, and 17. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent. Number 12, we just use the calculator. Make sure that on 12 and 13, we're going to be in degree mode. So I'm not going to write these down, I'll just put them in the calculator. Sine of 46 degrees gives us, oh, see, I don't think I'm in the right mode. Oh, I am, good, okay. So sine of 46 degrees is 0 0.719. Tangent of 34 degrees is 0 0.674. And then for 14 and 15, we need to be in radian mode. So go to your mode, change it to radian. And then we do sine of 2 pi over 5, 0 0.951, and the cosine of 2 pi, which I think is going to be exactly 1. So when it's degrees, make sure you're in degree mode. When it's radians, which typically means pi, not always, but typically, then you want to be in radian mode. 16, use your calculator to solve for theta. To solve for the angle, we have to use the arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent, which are the sine to the negative one, cosine to the negative one, and tangent to the negative one you see right above the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons. So for number 16, to get that, we need to do second sine, which is arc cosine of 0.5474. Uh, and I'm in the wrong mode, so always gotta be careful there. Let's try that again now that we're in degree mode. So we get 33.189 degrees. Okay, 17, we need to do arc tangent of 23.0307. We get 87.514. Okay, 18, we're asked to solve for x. So again, pay attention to what side you have. Given this angle, this is our adjacent side, this is our opposite side. The trig function that uses opposite and adjacent is tangent, so we get tangent of 37 degrees is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So to solve for x, we just multiply both sides by 250. You can plug that straight in your calculator. Again, make sure you're in degree mode. We get 250 times the tangent of 37 degrees. We get 188.388. Or 188.389, I think is how it rounds. For 19, same type of process. Given this angle, this is our opposite side, and this is our hypotenuse. Sine is the thing that uses opposite and hypotenuse, so I can set up the sine of 23 degrees equals the opposite over the hypotenuse. Now to get x, we multiply both sides by x. And I'm gonna come down here, x times sine 23 equals 16. Then we divide both sides by the sine of 23 degrees. So that's what we need to plug in the calculator, 16 divided by the sine of 23 degrees. get 40.949, 40.949. Okay, number 20, find the amplitude and the period for the function. So remember, we're going to call the number in front of the whole thing A, the number in front of just the X, B. To get the amplitude, we just look at the absolute value of A. So amplitude is always positive, so in this case it's 4. And in number 21, it's 1 half, because it's just the absolute value of the number out front. 
Now for period, we have to do a little more work. For period, we have to do 2 pi over b. So in this case, we do 2 pi over 5, and that's just it. The period is 2 pi over 5. Now for the second one, we get 2 pi over 2 pi, which is 1. So the period will be 1. So the amplitude is the absolute value of the number out front. The period is going to be 2 pi divided by b, which is the number or the coefficient in front of x. Okay, for 22 and 23, we need to sketch one period of the function. So first, my general shape for cosine starts up top, goes down, and comes back up to where it stopped, or where it started, excuse me. And we see here that the amplitude is 3, so that means I go as high as 3, or as low as negative 3. My b is 2, so remember period is 2 pi over b, so that's 2 pi over 2 which is pi. So I go all the way over to pi, and then I do the midpoint of that, which is pi over 2, the midpoint of that, which is pi over 4, and then between pi over 2 and pi right here will be 3 pi over 4. Okay, on 23, same or similar process. We need to first draw the shape. This is a negative with the sign, so I'm going to in start in the middle like always, but I'm going to go down first and then up instead of the other way around. My amplitude is 4, so I go as high as 4 and as low as negative 4. My period, I need to do 2 pi over pi, so I just get 2, so that means it stops right here at 2. Halfway is 1, halfway between that is 1 half, halfway between those two is 3 halves. Those are the key points they're talking about. The one half, the one, the three halves, and the two, just like in number 22, the pi over four, pi over two, three pi over four, and pi. And finally, describe the shifts for the equation. Okay, so we're just looking at the shifts. Inside the parentheses here is a horizontal shift. Since we've got a minus, that means it's going to move to the right. And to know how far it moves right, you take this number and divide by this number. So that means we move to the right, pi over 2. We call those letters C over B, or those numbers. And then outside the parentheses is a vertical shift. Plus means we move up, and we move up 4 units. Okay, the only thing not on this review sheet is the law of sines and cosines. We did a lot of that in class, so I didn't want to make you do extra for this. But if you need more practice, you can do the odd ones in 7.1 and 7.2 in your textbook.